Welcome, my name is Emmy, and today is a, another video in my series of mental health awareness for this week. <laughs> I suck at intros. Um, essentially, if you haven't been keeping up, I have other videos that I've done this week in regards to mental health because it is mental health awareness month in the States. So I dedicated, uh, I'm dedicating a week on my channel talking about different mental health topics. The first uh, video I talked about my personal experience with mental health. The second I talked about the inner dark voice called the saboteur. And today the topic that I want to talk about is about being in a relationship with someone who has mental health issues. Um, Essentially, the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because I am married and I am married to someone who has not been diagnosed with any kind of specific mental health issues, you know? Um, he doesn't have like depression or any of that stuff like I do. So um, it seems very interesting to me the different dynamic that you might have with someone in that situation also I've also seen a lot of people on YouTube a lot of youtubers that I watch um, that apparent that have kind of the same situation you know they're people who um, they deal with anxiety or panic attacks and whatnot and most of the time their partners are people who don't go through that same thing um, so I kind of wanted to give a little bit of tips maybe or just some advice or kind of my experience of how I have dealt in that situation being in a relationship like that. If you're in that situation, I, what I, my understanding is that um, I know that it can be very difficult. It, it is very difficult because I said before, these kind of things, um, these kind of issues when it comes to having anxiety and panic and depression, all those things, I, I see them as being selfish diseases. Meaning that it's all about you. It's all about the person who is dealing with it because there's no amount of explanation that I can give you that is going to really help you comprehend exactly what it is that I'm going through. You can have an idea. You can make, you know, make up an idea in your head and kind of be like, okay, well, maybe it's kind of like this. Chances are you might be off the mark completely. And that's okay. Um, I find that a lot of people find it very frustrating to be around people like that because um, the main thing is just being powerless. You know, that's the main issue that I have seen a lot of other people talk about. And even my husband has told me a lot of times that the worst thing about this whole situation about me being like this is how powerless he feels because he can't do anything. He can't control anything. There's nothing that he can do or really say to stop whatever it is that is going through my head that might cause for me to have a, an anxiety attack or be depressed or whatever. Like, you know. And that's very difficult to deal with. It's very difficult to feel that powerless. And <clears throat> with that powerlessness, a lot of times comes feelings of guilt. You know, you feel really guilty because you're like okay and the person that you love or care for is not okay and you don't know, you know, what to do. And also can come a sense of frustration. Frustration in yourself for not being able to do something. And a lot of times you can also be frustrated with your partner because you just want them to be clear like sometimes you're just like can you just tell me what can I do to make you feel better and it's like there's nothing you can do <laughs> I mean there are things that you can do but it's very it's like it's small things there's not there's not a switch in our brains that you can tap into and, and turn on and off it's not something that simple it's a little bit more complicated than that. So I wanted to navigate that and kind of help out and hopefully if there's someone watching who is dealing with someone like that, you know, maybe this can help you out. Who knows? 
So the number one thing that is the most obvious thing, but even though it's the most obvious thing, it is also the hardest thing and the thing that people tend to not know how to do very well is communicating. Talk about it. Talk about it. Um, and this goes both ways, not just for the partner, but also for the person dealing with the situation. It is impossible for my husband to know exactly how I'm feeling and what I'm feeling unless I tell him that I'm feeling something. You cannot expect for a person to know that you're panicking or to know that you feel sad or you feel down. You can't put that responsibility on them because a lot of us deal with our situations in a very internal way. It is very rare that there is any kind of external... Um, uh, external showing of what it is that you're going through like what would be an external thing of depression crying I mean that's the only thing I can think of is that if you start crying but I can I know of a lot of people who have severe depression and don't cry at all they're just like you know um, it's very dangerous to, to follow these these stereotypes when it comes to mental health and apply them to everybody because, like I've said in previous videos, everybody goes through everything in a very different way. So it's very important that you um, are clear with your partner about what it is that you're going through, how it is that you feel, um, so that they know, that they're aware because I know that it can be very... Um, that it can suck, you know, that you're someone that you care for is hurting, is going through something and you didn't know and you're like, damn, but why didn't you tell me? And I understand also that as being, as someone who, who is anxious and, and panicky and all that, there's always that voice in your head that's saying, you know, don't say anything because you don't want to annoy someone. You don't want to, you don't want to be a bother. You know, you're like, well, I'm not going to say anything because I know this person is busy or they're dealing with their own thing or this person is stressed. I don't want to say anything. And, and you know, and that's fine. But at the same time, it's like, well, how many times are you going to do that? Like, are you going to wait until it something really bad happens to you? And then, you know, the, uh, your, the your partner's going to be like, I didn't even know that this was going on. What's up? And, you know, if you're in a relationship with someone... And not just a romantic relationship, but a friendship or, you know, parent, child, a brother, sister, whatever. If you're in a relationship with someone and you care for someone, you always want to talk to each other about what's happening. Because the this person cares for you, you know, they love you and they want what's best for you. So it's not going to bother them if you tell them, hey, I'm not feeling my best today. And sometimes... I mean, the majority of the time when I say that, when I tell my husband or whoever, you know, I'm not feeling my best, I'm not saying that because I want them to do something. Sometimes just saying it out loud helps me feel better, you know? Sometimes if I'm feeling, if I have that heaviness and I'm just like feeling like I don't want to do anything, if I say it out loud, if I tell someone, hey man, I'm feeling whatever, whatever, that kind of like it, like a coming out of my mouth and kind of letting it out of my body does does me very well. So, you know, you talking about it sometimes is not just about that you need help or you want someone to do something for you. Sometimes it's just a way of release of talking. So don't feel afraid to communicate with each other about how you feel about what's going on. If you, as a partner, don't understand what's going on, if you don't really understand what it means for when this person say that they're depressed or they have anxiety or whatever, ask questions. Don't live in ignorance because that's only going to hurt your partner and it could potentially hurt your relationship. Ask questions. Get invested if that's what you really want. I mean, if you really care for them. If you don't, then bye. But if you do... Invest yourself in into them and, you know, do some research. Go on Google. Google different types of anxiety, whatever, 
different tips and whatnot and just have a conversation. Communication is a number one thing. And I say that people don't do this um, correctly and it's because a lot of times people think that communication is just going, um, hey, um, I feel like this. Okay, thank you for letting me know. <laughs> and that's it. Like people like to talk in half sentences and half words and don't um, don't get into specifics, you know, and a lot of times it's because of that stereotype that, you know, is like, oh, you don't want to be the nagging wife or you don't want to be the, the overbearing husband or whatever. And it's, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. There is no, when it comes to relationships, there, you shouldn't follow other people's rules about what it is that a relationship is. You know, you should make your own rules depending on who you are as people and how you communicate. And as long as there's consent, there's safety, and there's freedom, you could do anything, you know, as long as those three things are there. Um, anyways. So yeah, communication, very important from both parts. You got to do it. One thing that, I, that I've seen also a lot is a lot of people that are in relationships with someone with mental health and whatnot, they ask, should I go to therapy? Should I, um, you know, seek help? And my question, my answer is always going to be yes. <laughs> I think everybody should um, seek help. Like I said before, nobody is equipped to deal with life on their own you know you always need somebody to vent and to speak to and I don't think it's a good idea for you to vent and speak about especially when it comes to your partner you know potentially private um, intimate things to a friend or to a, a family member because chances are they're not gonna know what to do chances are that person is not a professional therapist or psychologist or counselor unless they are then you're lucky you get to have that shit for free but if you don't I don't think it's a good idea to dump all that on someone else who may not even be equipped to handle it you know sometimes people tell you something and you're like oh, and now you have to carry that burden of that knowledge um I always think it's a great idea to get counseling or therapy from um so that you can know how to better help the person in your life that ha that is dealing with the mental health issue. Also, um, or you can go to therapy with your partner. I mean, you know, my husband does that. He comes to therapy with me and we have a session, both of us together with the therapist. And it's not like, I know that's another cliche where people are like, oh, you know, we're going to marriage counseling. It's not marriage counseling. It's, it's just... Two people that are, that have an issue and are dealing with it, you know? Sometimes it's good for you to sit there and listen to what another person is saying to someone who is impartial and, and have them really open up and say things that maybe they wouldn't say in any other um, environment. It's always good. I'm never going to say that you shouldn't go to therapy. You absolutely should. Um... And doing that for your partner also shows that you care. I think that that's really sweet that if you are with someone and you're like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm seeking help so that I can help you better. Major brownie points. When I was on Twitter, I saw this thing that I, this thread of um, this person. Let me see who she is. Um, so it's, uh, Twitter handle is Kelsey Darag, Darag, I'll put it here. <laughs> so is she, is she's, I guess she works for Buzzfeed or, um, she has a podcast, that sort of thing. Anyways, she made, she did a post on, on Twitter, kind of like a thread, um, talking about the different things that she would have her partner do for her while she's having a panic attack. Um, so he wants to understand what she's going through, which is essentially what any partner would do, wants to understand what it is that's wrong with her and how he can help. 
So I want to go through um, a couple. I want to go through these things because a lot of these things are so helpful, and some of them are just like it's very easy. It, she called it fifteen realistic things you can do to help through a panic attack. Because a lot of times people think that saying things like calm down or it's okay. Please don't tell people who are having a panic attack to calm down. Please don't do it. Don't do it. Because it's frustrating because it's like fucking obviously I want to calm down. That's the problem. I can't calm down. I'm trying to find my chill. Where is it? So don't tell people to calm down. Don't do that. Anyways. So I'm just going to read through them and then, you know, hopefully that would help out anybody's listening. So uh, first she says, know that I am scared, won't be able to explain why, so please don't freak out or be annoyed with me. <laughs> That's a, a, a great thing. If someone is having, is your partner having a, an anxiety attack or a panic attack, don't freak out with them. And if you are freaking out, remove yourself from the situation because two people freaking out is going to create a bomb and then everybody's going to explode and die <laughs> well not so dramatic but you know um you just you have to uh, exercise patience you know most of the time or i'm gonna say like a good probably 95 to 98 percent of the time when i'm having a panic attack or an anxiety attack i am aware you know in the back of my head I am aware that there's nothing wrong going on. I am aware that I am okay and I'm safe. But my brain and my body have already reached a point where, you know, it's already heightened and now I can't really bring myself. I'm trying to ground myself. So I understand that I'm safe, but I need for you to help me get there so two find my meds if they're nearby make sure to take it if somebody is taking medication please make sure that they take their medication breathing exercises are going to frustrate me but they are vital try and get me to sync my breathing with yours this is one of the biggest things i cannot stress this enough breathing exercises are so important and honestly my therapist gave me a very simple breathing technique and if it wasn't for that breathing technique i would be freaking out every moment of every day it brings me down from anything if i see anything that's even triggering or whatever a breathing exercise i mean women who are giving birth are told to breathe through it because breathing exercises helps with the pain if that can if breathing can help through that it can definitely help through a panic attack so that's very important um, make gentle suggestions of things we could do together to distract my panic. Don't tell me what I need should do and listen when I say no to something. That's also very important. Um, like I said, most of the time when someone is having an anxiety or panic attack, what we need is to be grounded, you know. Um, our body and our mind is floating in a cloud of, of distraction, of panic. And we need something to kind of bring us back and give us a sense of safety so if you can find a way to distract them um you know my therapist says that a, a good thing is like to count to um not to count well to count backwards or to um describe the color of the objects in the room so like i have like you know gray wall yellow pillow uh white cover black bed, brown closet, like that. And just give your brain something to do so that it can forget the panic. I'm great at this. <laughs> um, so this is for people who have this associative panic. Remind me that this has happened before. This too shall pass. It always does, but it's scary AF when it's happening. So maybe tell me some fun facts about me or a life together that will make me smile or laugh. I mean, this is for a very... Specific kind of panic is for people who kind of disassociate when they panic, meaning that they kind of forget who they are and forget what they are, and they kind of like remove themselves from their reality. That's kind of intense, but it happens. Um, sips of water can be helpful, but don't tell me I need to eat or drink because trust me, I feel like I'm going to vomit. Yeah, very, 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 very rarely do I ever want to do anything after I have a panic attack. Normally, after I am feeling anxious or panicky, 
my energy is completely drained and most likely I'm just going to want to sit there and just recover from whatever happened. So drinking water is very important. Please make sure that your partners are drinking water. Number seven is keep breathing. Breathing is important. Eight is if we can leave where we are, take me home. Oh my God, I can't even tell you how many times I've been in a place and I'm just like, no, 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 I need to go now. If you know that your partner has mental health issues and they are uncomfortable in a public place where they are, please don't force them to stay. Please don't be like, oh no, but let's stay for a couple. No, don't do that because you can't understand just how, not just uncomfortable, like, oh, I don't want to be there. No, no, no. It's painful. It's painful to be in a place in a public place when you feel anxious, when there's a lot of people and a lot of noise and everything is just so overwhelming that it hurts, you know, it's just, it's just not good. So either you take me home or you make sure I get home, but don't force me to stay in a place where I don't want to be because it's just not going to end well. I mean, imagine having a panic attack in public. That's so embarrassing. Like, come on. Don't, don't put your partner through that. Number nine, please be really nice to me. I'm not feeling like myself. I'm embarrassed, feeling guilty already for putting you through this. So please don't get frustrated with me. It's, it's sad that people even feel the need to even write that down, but it is completely true. There's so many people who, who think that you're just being childish and it's just like, oh my God, get a grip. And it's like, like I said before, Chances are that if I, if you're going through a panic attack or anxiety attack, your partner is fully aware of the fact that they that they are having a panic attack and that everything is okay, but it's just it it cannot be controlled. I cannot tell you enough how horrible it feels to be so out of control of your own person. Um so it's not that we are looking to have this happen, it's just that it does. And when it does, you can't stop it. You have to let it go through and it will pass, but you just have to be patient. So, you know, please be aware that we are aware. So don't get frustrated. Number 10, sometimes a really big, loose, long, hu uh, long hug will help me feel safe. Um, yes, but I'm going to say that, well, she did... Uh, you know, say sometimes. So this is not for everybody. There's a lot of times where I'm having an anxiety attack and the last thing I want to do is get touched. Um, I think that you should um, ask if they want to be touched and if it's okay for you to rub their arm, if you to rub their shoulders, touch their hair and like pat their hair like that. A lot of people find that very soothing. Sometimes contact with someone else helps with the grounding, you know, because um, a lot of people when they have really bad panic attacks um, kind of forget that there's other people and they feel like they're by themselves. So by somebody touching you and kind of holding your hand, it's like, I'm here. You're not alone. But you have to be careful because not everybody likes that. A lot of people find touching um, too overwhelming. Another thing that is so, I feel that is inappropriate is if you're a partner, um, like if you, you know, if you're a husband, wife, whatever, and they're, your significant other is having a panic attack, don't try to involve them in any kind of sexual intimate anything like don't be like oh give me a kiss or anything other than that that's just well again that's very personal but I also think that that might be a little bit inappropriate because it, it would just seem like you're just trying to get it out of the way and it's like instead of you kind of focusing and really trying to help it's just gonna seem like you know like you just want to get some <laughs> So don't do that. Don't try to engage in any kind of intimate sexual anything because unless the person that's having the panic attack explicitly says, hey, <laughs> you know what will make me feel better? Then in that case, but you know. Um, 11 says, helping me breathe will be hard, but so key. 
but again, breathing is very important. Uh, a lot of times you will have an issue getting your partner to breathe. Um, but you have to keep trying. Be patient. 12. If it's really bad, call my mom or sister or BFF on the phone for me. Um, yeah, well, that's also very, you know, uh, case by case. If you feel like um, your partner or the person that's there is going through something really heavy, maybe there's somebody else that they can speak to that would actually help them. Maybe there is like a family member or a friend that has known this person for longer and knows how to deal with it. Or if you can, get in contact with your doctor, get in contact with your therapist, call them, text them, say, hey, my partner or my friend or whoever is having a really bad, bad panic attack, what can I do to help them? And maybe just by calling them, putting them on like speakerphone, they can say or do something that maybe you don't know and help them and that way you'll learn. And then you can do it yourself in the future. 13, tell me not to fight it. Rather, let it pass through me. Oh, don't tell me. Don't tell me to not fight it. No. Don't tell me not to fight it. <laughs> Rather, let it pass through me. The more I try to control it, or for you to try and control it, the worse it will be. Yeah, so I mentioned this before. Uh... Having an, uh, a panic attack or an anxiety attack or whatever kind of attack, you know, it's not going to stop. It, it, if you if you try to control it, it's just not. It's, it's something that is going to go through you whether you want it or not. If it already started, there's a lot of times where a lot of us after, if you've gone through like a lot of sessions or whatever, it might come, you might come to a point where you already understand your body and your brain and you kind of know when you're getting there. So at that point, you might be able to do something to kind of fight it and control it. But if it, if you're in the middle of a panic attack or an anxiety attack, it's going to go through you and you have to let it. And for the partner, don't try to control it from happening. Like, And that would be like telling people to calm down or whatever. Don't do that. It's going to happen. Just let it happen. Empathize with me. You may not get it, but you get me. Um, this kind of goes without saying. I mean, if it's somebody that you care for, that you love, being empathetic shouldn't be difficult. Um, you know, you may not understand what this person is going through, but you know the person and just caring for their well-being should be enough. So, And last but not least, once it passes... Open up a dialogue with me about it. How'd you do? What can we do next time? Um, so yeah, that essentially goes through the same point that I said before about conversation. You know, talk about it. Um, ask your partner, you know, maybe to if they can pinpoint exactly if there was a reason why it happened or was there an action or something they saw because that can also help your partner, you know, the person kind of pinpoint a trigger, which, you know, can be very important as well so that they know when they can prevent it or know how to maneuver it if they ever see it or experience it again. Um, but talking is never going to be a bad thing. Talking about the situation is always going to be good. And also it kind of gives us a sense of, it gives you a sense of release and a sense of, um, it just makes it feel better because if you become engaged and you show that you care by asking questions and talking, it'll make the situation a lot easier for us to uh, to ask for help and to involve you more in the situation that we're going through. Um, and yeah, you know, and then, you know, ask if they want some ice cream and or some cookies or something afterwards and just... A little bit of pampering can go a long way. Um, but yeah. So I hope this was helpful for someone out there. If you're watching this and you have any tips and tricks that you think um, would be helpful in the event of having someone near you having a panic attack or anxiety attack, I would love to hear it. You can leave it in the comments below. Um, if you follow me on Twitter or if you go to my Twitter to my likes, um, you'll find the tweet of that person 
and that way you can read it yourself and check it out. It's very helpful and the thread of the conversation is also very helpful. There's a lot of uh, different people giving their tips of what helps for them. Uh, like I said, this kind of thing, this kind of issue with mental health is very personal and, it, and it's very unique to different people. So don't think that because you do something that is going to automatically work. You can try something and um, and it might work, but there's a chance that it might not because, like I said, not everybody goes through these things the same. So patience is very much required. Um, so yeah. Anyways, that's it for this video. So yeah, let me know. Give some feedback. I would love to hear it. All right, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.